Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless is Tuesday, May 14, 2024. Tucker meets Alan, Daniel confides in Tessa, and Lily receives confirmation from Jill. Daniel asks Lily whether it's a good time when he walks into her office. She didn't respond when he texted her. Whatever this is, Lily doesn't have time for it. Daniel would like to talk about the litigation. There's nothing to talk about, Lily argues. Daniel believes she knows that this is incorrect. He is just requesting the portions of Omega Sphere that are most meaningful to him. Lily is enraged that the firm owns the platform. Daniel contends that he made Princess Louisa for his daughter in order to show her how much he cared. Just because you want something doesn't mean you have to have it, Lily asserts. After what transpired between them, Daniel reasoned that perhaps she would have calmed down by now. Lily yells that he cheated and nothing happened between them. This platform was not created by him, and he is surely not entitled to keep it. Daniel is furious that it seems like retaliation is the only motivation here. Lily tells Daniel that they ought to be speaking with attorneys about this. This isn't personal, she maintains. She wants to maintain it for the benefit of the business, while he wants to keep some portion of the platform. There is no personal gain. Okay, Daniel smirks. Lily objects, saying that he signed a contract that is very valuable to CW. It is to me too, responds Daniel. We own the IP, per the contract, Lily says. Their bottom line would be impacted if they were to give him back bits and pieces for free. Daniel claims that although logic and the law support her, they also serve as a shield for her to hide behind. He is approaching her as a friend and a person who greatly loved her. Do not take this from me, please. As they watch Dom play at the park, Devon and Abby smile and make fun of each other. She queries him over the events occurring at work. It's Billy, he says. What did he do this time? Inquires Abby. Devon claims to have told them. Jill gave him complete control over her. That doesn't make any sense, remarks Abby. Devon concurs, which is why he believes Jill was not the one who made this decision. He will not put up with Billy's power grab, in his opinion. The timing seems odd to Abby. Devon chuckles. He considers it odd that Jill failed to bring it up and isn't present to confirm it. He is certain that Billy is acting dishonestly. Although Abby believes Jill should have notified them herself, she also believes he might be on the upswing. Devon is baffled as to why she would deceive both Lily and him. Abby gives a shrug. She must have a valid explanation. Devon questions her desire to fight. They keep talking about how strange everything is. What does Devon want to do, Abby asks. Devon desires to speak with Jill. She notices his frustration. According to Devon, everything began when Lily left town. After Chance and Billy were introduced, Mamie began to cause issues. Good business cannot be conducted under insecure leadership. How do you think Neil would have handled it, Abby asks. Audra is spotted by Ashley's immature persona as she enters society. Tell me you've changed your mind about Tucker, please. Teenage Audra grimaces and says she can't help it. Well, I suppose that everyone has blind spots. Observing Audra's alone, she muses that perhaps Audra did give up the snake. She is assured by Audra that they will make it to Paris. Tucker's relationships seem to work out so nicely there, despite the altar snarks. I don't know what you want from me, says Audra, who doesn't see the purpose of this conversation. Tucker isn't worth her effort, the altar says. Audra feels that she is unable to comprehend how sturdy they are. When things get difficult, she doesn't give up on him. With a perky wish, Ashley's alter eye, Audra believes Alan's visit is beneficial. You know, the whole doctor-slash-patient thing, you might want to be careful there. The alter giggles at Audra advising her on dating. When Audra presses Ashley about her relationship with her therapist, the alter responds that they are merely friends. Audra believes she is attempting to seduce and enchant Alan in order to divert his attention away from her mental health issues. The altar hints at the intriguing storyline she has concocted. 
she claims that although Alan is handsome and intelligent, their relationship isn't conducted professionally. There's nothing to worry about. Whatever the cosmos has in store for her, she's game. Tucker asks if Alan is planning to abandon Ashley when he sees him at the club with his suitcase. She is in dire need of assistance. You need to take action in this regard. What kind of assistance does he think he can provide Ashley, Alan asks. He realizes how important this is to him. Tucker wants him to share some information with her. Alan doesn't think she would want him talking to her ex about her. Tucker says he's just a worried friend. He describes her unsettling actions since Paris, including her extreme mood swings. According to Alan, people have a right to express their feelings. Tucker laughs, saying there's more to it than that. For her, the family is afraid. Alan wonders if he believes his actions may have contributed to this in part. Tucker apologizes for the harm they caused to one another. I probably could have offered a bit more assistance. He cautions that if left on her alone, she won't recover. Alan must remain here. Tucker clarifies that Ashley's perspective on him is ever-changing. In the third person, he talks about Ashley's mood swings and their conversation with Audra. Some action must be taken. This is where someone needs to stand up, and it can be you or her family. Alan suggests that it might simply be a miscommunication. He is asked to predict what Tucker is thinking at the moment. Al declares, You are guilty. You hope Ashley will receive assistance because you are concerned that she is in great pain and trauma as a result of the way you treated her. After that, you won't be held accountable for harming her. In his own words, Tucker takes responsibility for his actions and wants Ashley to receive support for herself. He has excellent nighttime sleep. Alan refuses to talk to him about Ashley. Tucker laughs as he finds out Alan has just reserved a different room. You've made the decision to stay and support her then. I had already decided that before I even sat down. He finds his manner appealing. They shake hands and Alan bids him a happy birthday. Devon claims that Neil would advise them to resolve their differences or leave the park. Although he would like to leave Lily, he is unable to do so. Can he and Billy work things out? Abby asks. Devon is unwilling to. He wants for him to be gone. They must devise a plan to free him. Abby is concerned. Devon claims that if Billy stays, the only thing to be concerned about is the harm he will cause. He has declared war, and they risk losing everything if he does nothing. Daniel begs Lily to let him keep Princess Louisa at Chancellor Winters. Since the ball decided to preserve everything, Lali is powerless. Daniel is not persuaded. Davin and Nate are willing to comply with her wishes. They are merely attempting to ease her burden since they are aware that this is about her. Daniel's perception asking if she wants to talk about it, Lily seems stressed out. With you. Lily mocks. Thank you, but no. She consents to have the board discuss Princess Louisa again. That's all Daniel thinks he can hope for. He wishes her luck with everything else she's juggling as he walks away. When Lily is by herself, she answers Jill's video call and exclaims, Jill, what the hell? Did you truly grant Billy complete authority behind our backs? Jill believes Billy has clarified what is going on. She should tell it to Lily. Jill claims that she took the action because Devon is adamant about forcing Billy out of the business. She needed to confirm that wasn't feasible. She didn't warn them ahead of time for the same reason. Devon must now take Billy seriously, as he has never done before. She is certain that by reducing disagreements, this will benefit the business. Billy now possesses the same abilities as Devon and her. She will continue to be a resource for advice. Now that Devon, Billy, and you are compelled to collaborate, we can resume our business. Jill gets a correction from Lily. You have greatly exacerbated the situation. Tucker is told by Audra at the club that he won't believe this. Ashley merely sent them best wishes. She talks about their meeting. What a strange change from previously. Her emotions are all over the place. She questions whether her friend, the therapist, is connected to the shift. Tucker thinks, it could be. He wants to put Ashley's problem behind him. She never knows what attitude Audra will get from her next, she laments. Tucker scolds her, telling her to stop. I just want to focus on the two of us. 
He advises them to arrange an earlier departure from the city. Is he attempting to flee from something, order queries? At society, Alan runs across Ashley's alter ego and tells her about his minor altercation with her ex-husband. He's a self-centered pig who enjoys talking to himself, she claims. She rejects the notion that he regrets his actions and is concerned for her. Alan tells Ashley's alter he will be staying. Tucker was happy to hear he was staying, he mused. Ashley wishes to concentrate on the task at hand. Can I help you? Says Tessa as Daniel enters society. Daniel knows who she is. She identifies herself as Maria's spouse, the sister of Cassie. Daniel loves her music, and it got him through some difficult moments. Is this a difficult moment, she queries. That would be an understatement, according to Daniel. Tessa pays attention well. Why don't you try me out? Tessa tells Daniel in the bar that she likes his work as well. Princess Louisa is outstanding. He made her for his daughter, she heard. She hopes to compose an album for Aria in the future. Daniel informs her that since his relationship with Lily didn't work out, Chancellor Winters is keeping the rights to his game. Even though he cheated and is without a leg to stand on, he is unable to let go of what he accomplished. Tessa understands. She's no stranger to making things difficult for herself and others around her. She remembers writing a song in her journal and kissing Mariah at the music festival when she saw Noah. That's a mess, Daniel agrees. Tessa claims that although her world broke apart, she needed assistance to put it back together. Daniel requests that she show him how to accomplish it, promising to remain indebted to her forever. Tessa chuckles. Abby tells Devon in the park that she prefers not to imagine the worst for Billy. What would lying get him anyway? Devon then receives a call from Lily, who informs him that Jill has at last returned her call. What Billy stated is true in every way. She gave her authority to him. Well, 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 Devon clucks. He's heading straight over since he has something to tend to. Lily urges him to hurry up, as they are running out of time. Devon is begged by Abby not to do anything he may regret. The alter ego of Alan and Ashley enters Chancellor Park, asking if Catherine knew her. Alan brings up Catherine. Ashley remarks, quite the mogul, but she secretly questions why she is unable to recall her background. The voice of Miss Abbott responds, because I want you to fail, you dumbass. Alan is told by Ashley's altar that she wants to kiss him. Tucker assures Audra at the club that he is not fleeing anything. All he wants is a vacation with her. Devon enters via the front door just as they are ready to go upstairs. Hey, are you free for a moment? I could benefit from your assistance. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.